Creating tax-free income in retirement could be as important as ever in the coming decades. In my opinion, as the bill comes due on the massive amount of borrowing to fund the spending needs of our government, tax rates have only one direction to go, and that is up. Taking steps to prepare for the future is smart, and that's why in this video, I'll explain why a reverse mortgage could be a crucial part of a financial plan in the right situations. Reverse mortgages allow Americans 62 and over to borrow money against the equity in their home with no obligation to repay it as long as they live there. Because you are tapping home equity, the proceeds come tax-free to the borrower. Once the home sells, the lender is paid back in full from the proceeds of the home. Are you a candidate to add a reverse mortgage to your financial plan? Stick with me as I explain part eight of my series, creating a 100% tax-free income stream in retirement. This video is about how reverse mortgages can deliver a tax-free income stream, potentially increase your net worth, keep social security from being taxed, and avoid IRMA surcharges on Medicare. Colin Exelby here, and I provide financial planning for business owners and their families that just makes sense. I own the financial advisory practice Celestial Wealth Management and provide advice virtually to clients all over the country. Reverse mortgages. What are they? Why are they important to a financial plan? Who do they make sense for? And what to look out for? If you keep watching, we're going to discuss these. Now, if you are watching this video, I know you are researching ways to maximize your after-tax retirement income and net worth. In this video, I want to provide you with the knowledge to know whether you are a good candidate for a reverse mortgage. This is a good spot to point out important disclosures. The information in this video is for educational purposes. This is not specific financial planning or investment advice. In addition, everyone's tax situation is different. You should discuss your tax situation with a qualified tax advisor before implementing any planning strategy. First, what is a reverse mortgage? A reverse mortgage is a type of loan that's designed to give people age 62 or over access to the equity that they've built up in their primary residence without having to sell it. To be clear, you can only get a reverse mortgage on the home you are living in. Unlike a regular mortgage in which the homeowner makes payments to the lender, with a reverse mortgage, the lender pays the homeowner. Now you have the option to receive a lump sum, a line of credit, or a series of payments over time, but you don't have to pay the loan back. You can if you choose to do so. It's nice to have that flexibility. You'll hear that word a lot. The loan balance accumulates interest over time similar to any other mortgage at the stated rate on the loan. And we will talk about how that impacts the financial plan in a little bit. The key part to understand is that the loan must be repaid when the borrower dies, moves out, or sells the home. And that's just like any other mortgage. Reverse mortgages are often called Home Equity Conversion Mortgages, or HECM for short and they're administered and regulated by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD as many people know it. It's a great way to provide flexibility to a retirement plan. Since the distributions are a loan of your own home equity, guess what? They are not included in your adjusted gross income reported on your tax return. You know what that means? That means they don't count as provisional income. They don't trigger high income Medicare premiums or the taxation of Social Security benefits. Huge! Government insurance is required and is provided through the Federal Housing Administration or FHA. They're also a part of HUD. This backstop provides critical assurances to both the borrower and the lender. Insurance for an HECM reverse mortgage guarantees the borrower funds if the lender goes out of business. And it ensures the borrower will never owe more than the value of the home when sold. Let me say that again, since that is really important. If the housing market declines, 
the borrower will never owe more than the home is worth when it is sold. The borrower gets what is in effect a tax-free advance on their equity in the form of a line of credit, fixed monthly payments, or a lump sum. But the borrower must also continue to pay the real estate taxes, homeowners insurance, and the cost to maintain the home just like any other mortgage. All right, so why are reverse mortgages important to a financial plan? One word, flexibility. When you reach what I call the retirement red zone, the five years before retirement and the five years after retirement, you're in a very important zone for the success of your retirement plan. The ability to tap different assets to pay for retirement living expenses in a tax efficient manner increases the success rate of your financial plan. For many retirees, a good portion of the retirement assets are socked away in tax-deferred retirement accounts like traditional 401ks and IRAs. I just talked with someone today about this. Over 90% of their assets are in these traditional 401ks and IRAs. Guess what? These assets have likely never been taxed. So what happens when you go to withdraw them? Well, when they're withdrawn, they're taxed at income rates and they contribute to provisional income. That can make Social Security taxable and increase your Medicare premiums. As retirees get close to and start drawing on these assets, the last thing that you want to see is a significant market downturn like what happened in 2000 to 2003 or 2007 to 2009. You probably remember those periods well or at least saw your parents deal with them. Of course, there is no way to predict if or when a major stock market decline will occur. Why is this so important to avoid in your retirement red zone? Well, if stocks decline significantly and you're forced to sell them low because you need funds to live, you lose the ability to wait out their eventual rebound. For that reason, having an ability to access other assets, like a reverse mortgage, can help reduce the chance of running out of retirement funds early. In essence, if markets were down and you had access to a reverse mortgage, you could potentially use those funds tax-free, remember, until the stock market recovers and then tap the retirement accounts. You could even elect to tap those accounts and pay back the home equity you took out if you wanted to. There's nothing in a reverse mortgage that says you can't. A second reason reverse mortgages can be so important to a retirement plan has to do with the taxes and surcharges. These are what I like to call stealth taxes because they creep up on you without realizing it. In previous videos in this series, we talked about the changes to the current tax brackets and the chances that tax rates rise significantly from here. Currently, there are two significant jumps in the tax bracket at certain income levels, from 12% up to 22% and from 24% up to 32%. If your Social Security, pension, or other income each year comes to the middle of a tax bracket and retirement account withdrawals would push you into a higher tax bracket, it can be beneficial to use assets like a Roth IRA and a Roth 401k or home equity through a reverse mortgage to keep your income out of those higher brackets. Paying loan interest can be a lot less than paying significantly higher taxes from creeping into a higher tax bracket. This is where sophisticated retirement income planning can potentially save you taxes at 22%, 32%, or even more. Earlier, I mentioned IRMA, and I'll be releasing a video shortly explaining IRMA in more detail. Basically, IRMA is the Medicare income surcharge. For 2022, individuals with income over $91,000 a year and married couples with income over $182,000 a year pay a surcharge that's added to their Medicare Part B and Part D premiums. You can see those additional monthly charges here. And if your income is higher, you will pay even more. This is also harder to plan for because the surcharge is based on your MAGI income from two years ago. If you are in these brackets, either because of significant investment income, retirement distributions, pension income, or rental income, Keeping your income below these levels can not only save you money on taxes, but also on Medicare premiums. Additionally, later on in life, it's most likely that if you're a married couple, one of you will outlive the other. But 
you will still have similar income, similar expenses, and similar assets. The surviving spouse will be assessed what I call the widow's penalty. Remember in earlier videos when I jokingly said to get married? Well, there are just a ton of benefits on the tax side for married couples, probably also on the emotional side. The widowed spouses will now most likely be in the single tax bracket for the rest of their life unless they remarry. That means potentially higher income taxes, capital gains taxes, and IRMA surcharges because you move from married filing jointly to single. The reverse mortgage can be a huge benefit to the widowed spouse to keep their income down and avoid IRMA surcharges. Who do reverse mortgages make sense for? All right, now that we know many of the advantages of reverse mortgages, let's discuss who they are most appropriate for. Actually, the better way to answer this question is to outline who they are not for. If this is not your primary residence, you cannot get a reverse mortgage. Second, if you are not yet 62 years old, you cannot apply for a reverse mortgage. And third, if you believe you're going to sell your home in the near future to move somewhere or downsize, I think a reverse mortgage on your current home may not be the best option because of the costs involved. So who do they make sense for? Ideally, they make sense for someone who plans to stay in their home for the rest of their life and is looking for flexible ways to access tax-free cash in retirement. First, if you are single, as I said, you must be over the age of 62 to qualify. If you're married, only one of you must be over the age of 62, but all borrowing qualifications will be based on the younger spouse's age. That's important if you have a wide age difference between the two of you. If you're married, it is mandatory that both of you are listed on the loan, but that's also good for financial planning purposes. Now, many times people think that using home equity is the last place you should go for retirement funds. I am here to challenge that thinking. I talk a lot about flexibility in my financial planning videos, and that's because we don't know what financial markets will do in the future, what unexpected health scares we will have, what tax rates will be, or what the world will have in store for us. Who thought we would have a pandemic? Not many people. So proactively creating access to various assets allows us to customize where we get funds in retirement and when. This can potentially lower taxes significantly in retirement and can allow you to avoid having to sell stocks to live on during a downturn. Even CNBC personality and PBS host Susie Orman recently said on her show that accessing a reverse mortgage is often a better option than selling stocks when they've declined or paying capital gains taxes. Well, duh, that seems to make a lot of sense to me. All right. Now that we know who a reverse mortgage candidate is, let's fast forward a minute. What happens when a reverse mortgage borrower does pass away? After a borrower passes away, the heirs take over the responsibility of repaying the reverse mortgage balance. Typically, heirs simply sell the house and use the proceeds to repay it. Proceeds from the sale of the home will always cover the entire repayment amount, even if the loan balance is higher than the sale price of the home. As a non-recourse loan, no other assets of heirs can be taken by lenders to repay the reverse mortgage. That is huge and an often overlooked part of financial planning. Now, while most heirs plan to sell their parents' homes, if the heirs prefer to keep the home as an inheritance, they only have to repay 95% of the loan. That's a nice advantage. All right, so what to look out for? Number one, watch out for pushy salespeople recommending a reverse mortgage without really knowing your financial situation. If it sounds like they're selling a reverse mortgage to anyone with a pulse, run as fast as you can the other direction. Work with a knowledgeable financial planner who knows your situation. Number two, scrutinize the costs of the loan so you know what they are, but don't dwell on them. I've seen a number of misinformed people talk about the high borrowing costs of a reverse mortgage as a reason not to pursue them. Well, as with any loan, there is an underwriting process to determine if the borrower has the financial means to pay for the loan. Traditional mortgage loans are known to have mandatory closing costs and fees, and reverse mortgages are no different. 
Both loans require expenses and closing costs, and since reverse and traditional mortgage closing costs include many of the same types of fees, the overall expenses are often very comparable. What is the major difference? The major difference is that reverse mortgage borrowers will often need to pay insurance on the loan to the FHA. This is what backs the loan if housing prices don't keep up with the loan value. In my opinion, it's a small price to pay for the peace of mind of not owing more than the home is worth when it's sold. Now that you know all about reverse mortgages and their tax-free income benefits, just click here for the next video in the series, How to Create a 100% Tax-Free Income Stream in Retirement. If you want to start from the beginning of the series, just click this video. Get clear, be clear.